If you've clicked on this video, you're probably thinking about making a Pokemon TCG deck. Maybe you've seen the recent worlds, maybe you've attended it, maybe you've just been playing with friends, you've been buying packs, and now finally you wanna play the game. If you wanna learn the rules or have a quick tutorial of turns and how they work, I've got a video, so I'll link that up here. However, in this video, we're gonna be taking a look specifically at deck building. Now there's two ways to look at this. I would say competitive and friendly. If you're looking at more competitive deck lists, you're normally gonna look at the meta game. Now these are gonna be decks that pop up at tournaments. So you're gonna to have to look at tournament reports, see which decks are popular. Like currently, kind of dates a video, but we've got Palkia, we've got Mew, we've got Arceus. Recently released, we've got the Lost Zone with Giratina and Cramoran. So in that example, let's say the format is dominated by Palkia. You wouldn't then go and play Charizard because Charizard is weak to Palkia, giving Palkia the strength in that matchup. Obviously, it's not that simple because there's a lot of decks you have to think about. You have to tech, which basically... You're gonna put certain cards in for certain matchups. And before you even get to the table, there's this game, which I really enjoy. That's one of my favorite parts of it, building these decks and working out what you're gonna be facing. But that is all for the competitive side. If you're looking for any specific help with decks, drop your questions in the comments below. I'm more than happy to help. But if you're just here for a friendly deck, one that you're gonna to take to Pokemon League, let's take a look at your options. Now, the easiest, and one you're not even gonna need this video for, Go buy a theme deck, buy a battle deck, buy the pre-release battle stadiums. They all come with pre-built decks that you can use straight out of the box. Now, these aren't gonna be perfect. They're not gonna be tournament winners. You're not gonna beat everyone at your league but they will get you started. It will let you understand how decks are built. You can see a certain amount of Pokemon, trainers and energy. Although if you're gonna move slightly into the more competitive scene or just you wanna build better decks, I wouldn't take that as gospel. It is a good starting point though. And then as you go and as you pull more cards, you can add them in, change them around, and finally begin to build your own deck. The Build and Battle pre-release kits are a 40 card deck, and then you get some packs with it. So you can open those packs and put the cards in. A deck is 60 cards. We are gonna get in specifically what cards you need, how many cards you need of each and all of that stuff in a moment. But first I'm gonna talk about some options of you getting to that point. The build and battle decks, the pre-release stuff are quite powerful. I'd say they're intermediate. I would say theme decks are very beginner, but if you want something slightly more advanced, slightly more powerful using some of those V and VMAX Pokemon you've seen, you wanna find a battle deck. So far out, we've seen stuff like Urshifu, we've seen Calyrex, so some really interesting combinations and you actually get those V and VMAX Pokemon in the kit itself. So these are super useful to buy if you've got no existing cards, you have no way into the game. It's a perfect way to start, and you start on a slightly higher scale than the theme and pre-release decks. However, like most people, if you've got a ton of cards collected, maybe you're just a collector at the moment, you wanna move into playing, which has been the case at our Pokemon League. Pretty much everyone that comes down collects. There's so many collectors out there that not many people make the transition to play, which is what I've been helping do at Pokemon League and it's what I'm trying to help do here. So at a very base level, your deck needs 60 cards in it. 30 or so of those are going to be supporters and item cards, 12 are going to be energy and then 18 for Pokemon. Now obviously depending what the strategy of your deck is, this can change drastically. I've seen decks with no energy, I've seen decks with 30, 40 energy. There's so many different ways to build Pokemon and depending on the Pokemon you use, it could vary. Like I mentioned before, if you wanna check out how to play the game, click up here. I'll recap it briefly, but in a turn, you can play one energy and one supporter card. Other than that, you can play any amount of Pokemon or item cards. When it comes to actually playing the game, you start with a basic Pokemon and you evolve up into a stage one, then stage two. So you can't just rush out those bigger, stronger Pokemon. It's something you have to gradually build up and it does make the stage two Pokemon slightly harder to use. In the TCG, it is very important drawing cards. Unlike stuff like Yu-Gi-Oh, if you're coming from a background there where I know there's not as much drawing cards, it's sort of combos. Pokemon is very much into the draw support. Now this could be via Pokemon, it could be via supporter cards, item cards. There's so many different ways to do it. Pokemon like Bibarel or Lipard are very good at this. So Bibarel has industrious and sizes, which lets you play your hand down and then draw up to five cards. You can also play a supporter in the same turn like Professor Sycamore, which again is gonna draw another seven and discard your hand. You can see how quickly you can shuffle through your deck, how quickly you can draw cards and see new cards. So Pokemon, unlike a lot of games, every single card you put into your deck 
is massively important. There is normally a way you can search it out during the game, so you want to make sure your list of 60 cards is perfect. It's one of my favorite things about the Pokemon game. So many people could play the same Pokemon but have slightly different lists and play slightly different games. I think it's fascinating. One of my favorite parts about deck building in the Pokemon TCG. But if we need to find these Bibarels, we need to find research, we need to find other cards, it's important that we play multiple copies of them. So if you're not familiar with deck building in any other game, you're allowed four of the same card in Pokemon. So you can have for Ultra Ball, you can have for Professor's Research, you can have for Bibarel. By doing this, you have a much higher chance of drawing those cards, but also it means you can play more than one of them. So for example, first turn we use Professor's Research. Because we've got another copy in the deck or another three, we know we can do that on the next turn and the next turn if we need to. So it's not only important to have those multiple copies so we can draw for our deck, it's also good for consistency. As well as drawing cards, search is a massive part of the Pokemon TCG. Playing stuff like Quick Ball and Ultra Ball, which let us search out certain Pokemon when we need them. For example, let's say we start the game and our attacking Pokemon is a Hisuian Growlithe or Arcanine, eventually once it's evolved, we need to find that out. Playing four Quick Balls means we have a good chance of finding those. You can also play Battle VIP passes, Level Balls, there's so many ways to search out Pokemon and not just rely on drawing cards. Obviously drawing cards, there is a bit of luck to it. So these search cards really make the game more interesting. And again, make those decks more consistent. So now we've got all the support, what about attacking Pokemon? Now this is gonna be down to you, honestly. It's gonna be down to preference. For example, in my current decks, I run Mew, I run stuff like Arceus, Gengar, Zoroark, Giratina, Pokemon that I love and build around. So here, drop in the comments below your favorite Pokemon and I will try and help you build a deck around them. If you've got some idea already, perfect. If not, I'll try and get you started. It's why I'm making this video to help you guys out. So let me know in the comments any help you need, any Pokemon you wanna build around because it's hard to say use this because you might not like that Pokemon. And then at the end of the day, it's supposed to be fun and it's supposed to be using stuff that you like. So I don't wanna say use this because I could say use Palkia, use Mew, use Arceus, use Giratina, use Kyurem, use Zoroark, Gudra. There's so many powerful Pokemon that dominate the format, but when starting out, just build around stuff you enjoy. If I could suggest something, the new Lost Zone in Lost Origin, it's a really fun way to play the game. It's a very different way of playing it. So maybe give that a try. But you can see how quickly things start to take shape. You've now got Quick Balls, you've got Ultra Balls, you've got Professor's Research, you've got Bibarel to draw cards, you've got your chosen attacking Pokemon. Let's say, for example, in this video, you've chosen Torterra, which is a very powerful Pokemon, and if you're starting out, is a good one to go with. We take a look at its attack, Evo Press. Now this does 50 times damage for each evolution Pokemon in play on your side. So, in the latest set, we've got a Gengar, which can jump straight onto your bench using his ability. This is a really good way to trick Gengar into play, but also activate Torterra's effect, because Gengar is a stage two, he is an evolution Pokemon. So you can get him into play very quickly and get Torterra set up for some massive swings very early on. Torterra is also a grass Pokemon. So from that point, you start to search cards. You've got Turfield Stadium, which lets you find evolution of grass Pokemon, which in particular in this deck is incredible. Then you could maybe look at stuff like Gardenia's Vigor, which lets you draw two cards and attach to grass energy. There's a few different ways you can use this, but there's so much support for Pokemon out there. Once you find some in, just start looking for that type or stuff that combo with it. I know to begin with, it is very difficult to know all of these abilities. Like I know they combo because I know the Pokemon. So like I've mentioned before, if you need any support or any suggestions what to build with certain Pokemon, drop it in the comments below and I'm more than happy to help. If you wanna see some decks in action, like I say, click up here. I've got some deck lists of other decks I've been playing. So you can sort of take inspiration from them see how I've built them and maybe use that in your own. Like I say, at the end of the day, just have fun with it. Put Pokemon you like together, combo a few types of Pokemon you like, like Cinderace and Darkrai. Just make sure you have both sets of energy in there, maybe half and half, depending on the Pokemon. Then just cards to find them. Draw support in the Pokemon TCG is so important. So any cards that are gonna draw you more are always good. Any cards where you can search out Pokemon or specific things you need for your strategy are also good. Let me know how you get on with your deck builds in the comments below. That's all I've got for this one though, so I will catch you 
in the next one.